Hello and welcome to this video. And as you think, where the fuck are these been? No reviews or previews for months and months and months and months. But it's got to the point of the season where this game was huge. It was basically the make or break of our season to get automatic. And while well, we lost. So there's plenty to talk about. Plenty to bloody think about. There's going to be sections that I'm going to be dividing it up to talk about specific things. Obviously about Bazunu, Russell Martin, how the game went, red cards, blah, 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 right? Um, so those will be there if you want to skip through to wherever you want to look. Um, and while you're down there, make sure to like the video sub as well and also comment what you think if you disagree with me agree with me your own opinions let me know your thoughts but let's get into it and let's digest it so we're just going to start off with the normal stuff just the overall performance we'll get into the likes of Bazunu and Russell Martin's tactical whatever the fuck right we'll get into that later but for now we're just going to talk about the overall performance which I thought was good I mean the first half we should have been clear um obviously the first goal is a great finish can't do much about that but then obviously we hit back straight away with Adams and then hit back pretty quickly after that as well with Stuart Armstrong cooking, playing Adam Armstrong through to score. And the first half, we should have been up maybe 3-1, I would say, would be sort of what I expected with the chances created. And then when you move into the second half, obviously, as Saints fans know, there's normally a first half, which is good, and a second half, which is bad, or vice versa. It's never typically a 90-minute good performance or 90 minutes of pretty good. It's normally 45 good, 45 shit, or average, right? So the second half was pretty average. We started well, as usual, really. Um, we should have made it 3-1. Again, another chance missed when Downs was running through. Should have played Adam Armstrong or should have played Fraser early. Took too long, played Fraser too late, and it was a difficult shot to score. And obviously, their keeper made a good save as well uh, from a Bednarak header. Again, another good chance missed. But at the end of the day, for that first 60 minutes before their goal uh, to equalize it, we should have been up 4-1. Um, at minimum, 3-1. Should have had a bit of insurance there, but again... 2-1, tight game, and in an instant, it can flip, and that's what happened with Broadhead scoring. And from there, every Saints support on the planet had a feeling something was going to go wrong. There's been a lot of times this season where we put a good first half, good 60 minutes in, and then we fuck it up. Um, and so as soon as Ipswich score that second, you're thinking, oh, Christ, here we go again. It happened last week against Middlesbrough where we dominated basically all game just to concede a shit goal with three minutes left. So we all knew it was probably going to happen, but you still had that little bit of hope. You know, maybe this is the game where we decide to not bottle it. And you'd be wrong because we obviously lost it in the last, well, last kick of the game, really, uh, with Saramento being able to fall over, get up, and score. Brilliant. Now, I love that. When that happens in the box... <laughs> Excellent defending. But I think overall, it was a good performance if you take out the final result. But again, that result is, is not what should have happened. We should have at least got a point at minimum. And obviously with 10 men, you know, I can get a bit, you know, fucky. But we should have won the game, really. With a chance created, we should have won. We didn't win. And that is sort of the story of our season. So many games this season where we should have won or sh shouldn't have lost, you could say. And we end up losing or we end up drawing conceding shit goals, not scoring enough goals. Why are we conceding three? Why are we conceding three against Birmingham? Why are we conceding two against Sunderland? Why do we concede so many goals? And if you look at it, you'd probably say Harwood had a good game, Benrack had a good game, Stevens had a good game. Three of our defensive players had a good game. We shipped three. There is something fundamentally wrong with this defensive team. We'll talk about some of the tactics now because obviously Stevens sort of played a different role. Obviously Bree was playing over Walker Peters, which don't think was the right idea but at the end of the day you know people will criticize you know i had i had people coming in um on stream saying you know oh why do we change tactics from when we were doing well blah 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 why can you how can you criticize that we played well probably one of our best performances season against one of the best teams in the league away from home in a must-win match we played well we played very well matter of fact it's not about the tactics or it's not about the system that was the issue. It's the individuals that can't fucking take their chances and can't fucking defend their box. It's really that simple. And that's how it's been all season. People want to blame Russell Martin for this or that. People want to blame Bazunu or people want to blame Manning and all these sort of things, right? And yes, obviously, none of them are perfect. They make mistakes. They're all human. But at the end of the day, countless games where we've had countless chances to win the game, we fuck it up and we concede a shit goal. That's got nothing to do with the manager. The thing about the manager is he sets up his team to win the game. Did he set up the team to win the game? Should we have won the game? Yes. So therefore, he did his job. I don't know what you want from me here. <laughs> We should have won that game. With the chance created, we should have won. So how is that the manager's fault? And we'll talk. We'll just go straight into the to my only criticisms of Russell Martin while we're 
on the topic. The, uh, there's only really about two things I would criticize Russell Martin for. Now, obviously, the first one would be starting Bree. I have no issue starting Bree overall. Like, if he's playing left back or, or you wanted to do the sort of three at the back, Walker Peters can push forward, that's fine. But for me, Walker Peters has to play regardless. And it's not as if he's really shit defensively that he's just going to get carved open left, right, and center if he is exposed. He's typically a good defender, but he's also very good going forward. And I understand that the system worked. It's not like we, we struggled to create chances or anything like that. But Walker Peters has to play. Like, he is one of the best players in the team. He has to play, regardless. Now, if he came out and said, yeah, fitness concern, I would have been like, ah, oh, fair enough. Can't do much about that. And if he comes out now and says it was a fitness thing, ah, oh, all good. Criticism gone then, because, you know, Bree has to play. Fair enough. But he didn't. He, From what I've known, he's come out and said there was a tactical decision. He put out the best 10 to win the game, and I disagree. Because Walker Peters is one of our best players. He has to play. I mean, you play Adam Armstrong every week regardless of whether he's playing well or not because he's one of our best players. Like, he scores, he's got top scorer, top assists. He has to play. Well, same with Walker Peters. He's one of our best players. He has to play. So that would be my first criticism. Walker Peters should always start every game he's fit. Simple as that. Regardless of system or tactics or anything, he has to start. Second criticism is what I criticize him all the time for fucking doing. If you sub off Adams, right? Adams is a striker. Adam Armstrong's out right or left or whatever, right? If you sub off Adams, you do not put Adam Armstrong centrally. I've said it countless times. It was the same against Middlesbrough. Adam Armstrong cannot play centrally. And the reason for that is especially in a second half, we're typically... We sort of start to drift backwards. We're not as front-footed. We start to drift backwards. We allow a bit more pressure. Who the fuck is going to send it to a five foot seven striker in the year? You hold that up for us, Adam Armstrong. While you get piped from behind by two six foot five centre centre-halves. Yeah, brilliant, mate. It is stupid. I've seen it countless times this season, and it is dumb. If you're going to sum off Adams, you have to bring on Mara. Because Mara is the only one that can sort of do Adams' role. Not as well. But he can sort of do it. He's a bit more of a physical presence. He's a bit taller, a bit bigger. Adam Armstrong, ghosts. Every time he puts Adam Armstrong centrally, ghosts. Every time. What did he do against Middlesbrough when he, when he went centrally? Nothing. What did he do against Ipswich when he went centrally? Nothing. He can't play there. It's as simple. He cannot play there. But he always does it. And especially against a team like Ipswich. They're in fucking challenging for the league for a fucking reason. They're not shit right? They're, if we give ourselves the pressure of Ipswich's attack, they're obviously going to take advantage eventually. We need the outball to bring us up. Adam Armstrong is not the outball, fella. I know I probably, I know, I know I love Mara. We all love Mara. Super Seku, right? Would I have brought him on? Maybe if I saw Adams was really leggy and like couldn't do it anymore, maybe I'd bring Mara on, but I would have just kept Adams on. I mean, this Ipswich game, is the most important of the season so far. We had to win this. Now, on the weekend, when we play someone, I can't remember who it is, when we play on the weekend, maybe you go, well, Adams played 90 minutes against Switzerland. He can't play that game. Fine. We'll figure it out. But we had to get over the line of that game. We needed Adams or someone like Adams to keep up, really, the play, the hold-up play, the ability to get up. So those are really my criticisms. Only two, which is fairly decent, would be, obviously, Walker Peters not starting and Adams being subbed off and then Adam Armstrong going centrally. Never do it again, please. I'm begging. I'm begging. Maybe if we're up 4-0, you can do it. Oh, sweet hairs. Not when it's a close encounter, okay? And especially not when it's 10 men. Because Adam Armstrong ain't going to do shit, mate. All right, now we're going to move on to Gavin. Big Baz, big bazoo Um, We're going to talk about him because obviously he's being heavily criticized like every other game this season, basically. The only three things that have been blamed this season, Manning, bazoo Russell Martin. That's it. No one else is allowed to be blamed. Everyone else is okay. Maybe, at, well... Adams got blamed for the Middlesbrough game, but that's fair, though. Like, he missed a sitter, so that's completely fair. But there's a lot of unfair criticism that comes along the way. Manning, not so much, but Bazunu and Russell Martin get a lot of bullshit criticism, really. But let's buddy go through it. Let's buddy talk about the goals we conceded. Now, obviously, as you can see, this is the situation. Bree, there's a boy there. We should probably go closer. I don't know, just the concept. <laughs> just the concept. Let's maybe mark... The guy who's open. But, you know, it is what it is. Who knows how to mark? No one does. So the ball comes across. He takes a really good touch. No one's saving that. No one is saving that. I mean, someone did say Allison would save it. Yeah, probably. You know, best keeper in the world. Uh, we're in the championship. No one's saving that. Maybe the Rotherham keeper would save it because he's on roids 90% of the time. But he is not saving that. Mizuno's not saving that. Don't care. No criticism for that. He's not saving that. First, and, and, and especially, no one's expecting him to shoot that. Like, he shot from a ridiculous angle and hit it absolutely perfectly. You're not expecting that. 
Nah, don't care. All right, so looking at the second goal conceded now, now we can talk about uh, some great defending. So obviously he wins the ball on the left-hand side, plays it here. Now, Adam Armstrong, I don't know what's wrong with the video. It's blurry. Let me... Okay, it's just not getting better. Adam Armstrong, I know you're not a defender, okay? So you don't know the just instinct of defending. You should probably mark your man, just a concept. So Adam Armstrong completely leaves his man, and then that's... Look at that fucking space in here. That space is unacceptable. Unacceptable. And Adam Armstrong should be a lot tighter. And, and especially when the ball goes into him. Adam Armstrong's still not going to the ball. Still not going to the player. If he at least puts a little bit of pressure on him, maybe he fucks his shot. Maybe he goes, oh, maybe I need to take an extra touch to open it better. Maybe. You know, if, buts, and maybes at this point. But Adam Armstrong has to be closer there. And then when the shot comes in, now, people obviously criticizing Bazunu, blah, blah, blah. Keeper is the hardest position on the pitch. I mean, that's not even a debate. The two hardest positions are keeper and center mid or, or something in that central region. Keeper is the hardest by a mile. It is fucking insanely difficult. And especially when your defense are a bunch of Muppets, mate. So here we go. Adam Armstrong's obviously left his man. Let him go. Yeah, fuck off, Broadhead. Do whatever you want to the box, mate. No issue. And he struck it very quickly. Now, I'll let this play out. He takes it very quickly. First time. I mean, it's an excellent finish. First time snapshot is excellent goal. Really. It's a great finish um, from Broadhead. Now, the main difficulty here for Bazunu is that one... He's probably not expecting that shot to come instantly for obvious reasons. He's probably expecting it to take a touch. And then for it to also go through, that's not Ben Rack's legs, that is Howard, Howard Ballas' legs, makes it even more difficult because you're hesitant. Is it going to deflect? Is he going to block it? And then is it going to be a rebound? Someone else, I'm going to have to be ready. He ha He's hesitant. He's hesitant. And I think most keepers would be. And obviously, as he gets through his legs, you know, it's in the back of the net. I don't particularly blame Bazunu for this goal. Is he in a perfect position? Probably not. Could he have saved it? Maybe. But I'm not going to personally blame someone for when there are so many more issues in the build-up. Because at the end of the day, that is unacceptable. That hole right there is unacceptable. Um, Adam Armstrong's defending is unacceptable. And that's really my issue with this goal. Now, obviously, for the winner for Ipswich, um, obviously, we're down to 10 men. You know, it makes it a little bit more difficult. But fuck me. Every single player is on one half of the pitch. Not ideal. Not ideal in the slightest. And as that's played across, that is a ridiculous amount of space. I haven't seen that much space against Southampton since Pedro Porro uh, last season for Spurs. It was ridiculous. He had half the field to himself, and we had 11 men that game. It was ridiculous. But look at this. How, how long does it take for someone to put pressure on him? What was that three, four touches? Plays it in. It's a good ball in, to be fair. Um, he's picked the pass very well. Right here. Now, obviously, if he hits that in, fair enough, right? Defensively, he can't do too much about it. But when he fucking falls over, he falls over. Then takes another touch. Then shoot. To be fair, it's good on him as well. Like, it's very fast thinking, fast feet. The fact that he slipped, fall into the ground, taken a touch, then shot, and not one person, when there's five people right there, has even got in front of him, is outrageous. But yet we're blaming Bazunu. Yeah, let's not blame the shit defending. Nah, we'll blame the keeper. See, everyone saves, says this is savable or that should be saved or whatever, but everything's defendable. Everything could be prevented defensively, eventually. If you go back far enough, it could be. It is a stupid claim to say it's savable. Yeah, how about you look at the circumstances that brought that chance? At the end of the day, most goals conceded not a keeper's fault. It's from shit defending. Do you expect the keeper to save from six yards? No, you'd expect your bloody fucking player to probably tackle and block the cross. Be at least on him. Put a pressure on him, you know? It's not always the keeper's fault. And this isn't the keeper's fault. It's a good finish into the bottom corner. How is he... Put a step into Bazunu's shoes. The fuck has slipped over. How is he expecting him to shoot within half a second later with no pressure on it? It's not always Bazunu's fault. Bazunu's not a perfect keeper. He's not... He's made plenty of mistakes this season and last. He's not perfect. But fuck me, at least criticize him for goals that are completely his fault. If someone shot from 30 yards, went straight at him, and he did a Robert Green and let it roll up his arm and go in, I'm like, it's Bazunu's fault. Not a fucking fault of Bazunu. When the cunt is on the ground... I'm on the ground and still was managing to take a touch and finish before anyone tackles him. How is that the keeper's fault? Sometimes you just got to look at the defense and I'm looking at them and they fucking suck. So that's all I've got to say about Gavin. I've talked about Russell Martin's issues. Now we'll talk about the red card. This will be a quick section because it was a red. I don't care what you say. I had heaps of people saying, oh, the ref was shocking. It was never a red. It is a red. <laughs> 
Stonewall. You can't debate that. I don't want to hear anything about anyone saying that that wasn't a red. You're just being biased. You just are. It is a clear red. Bree got wrong side of his man. Should never have let that ball get past him in the first place. He didn't know the player was there till too, too late, basically. So if you watch it here, Bree's looking at the ball, looking at the ball, looking at the ball. He doesn't know he's there. You can tell he doesn't know he's there because as soon as you see him, he's like, oh, fuck, I better slow down. He doesn't know he's so far advanced, and that's poor positioning. And he needs to... Sh fuck, what is wrong with this video? This can't even see what's happening at this point. Um, <laughs> so he should angle his run here as much as possible to sort of get on the goal side. But instead he goes, nah, I'll just pull him down. It's a red card. Stonewall red card. Don't want to hear anyone complain about it. It's a red every day of the week. As soon as I saw it, it's a red. Can't complain about it. Whatever, right? Would I say it's Bree's fault? He should have been so out of position where that ball and that first touch is so ahead of him that he has to try and bring him down, I guess. And obviously you could say, well, why did Bree just let him through? Well, if he lets him through, he probably gets a good shot at goal. Maybe he scores. Maybe he plays it across to, uh, what's his name? Al Hamadi or something like that. If he can play it maybe across to him, maybe Howard comes through. It's all if, buts, and maybes. At the end of the day, Bree tried to be physical and was too physical. I mean, for me personally, I don't like uh, soft fouls and all these sort of things. When I say a soft foul, yes. But the matter of the fact is that nowadays, that's a Stonewall red. I mean, if, if a Southampton player went down like that, you'd expect a red as well. Um, I would prefer a bit more physicality in the game, but that's sort of gone in the recent years. Everyone's sort of playing the ref, as they say. All right, so let's talk about this because obviously clips of the reactions went on TikTok, on blah, 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 YouTube and stuff like that. So people crying. Um, about my opinions, which is fine. You can have your own opinions. I've, I don't really give a shit. Um, I'm pretty strong with my opinions. I'm not going to disrespect your opinions unless you disrespect mine, really. Um, so at the end of the day, I was pretty adamant, uh, more, Morsley, I do believe. I don't know if that's how you say it. Uh, the captain of it switch should have been sent off. Um, now obviously that's not me just like, that's, like this is, this is this one of these things where you say one thing and people assume that you don't also accept the other. Like say, I say, Messi's been Ronaldo. Oh, Ronaldo's shit then. No. Just like this, Morsley should have been sent off, should have had three different yellow cards. So people countered that claim by saying, well, well, Southampton should have had more yellows. Yeah, we should have. Like, no shit. <laughs> like, there was plenty of fouls. I remember one vividly. Stevens completely pulls someone down um, as he's running into the box. It was a free kick yellow. Wasn't given. Like, yeah, the refs are shit. Like, I'm not going to fucking sit here and say the refs are all on Ipswich side or all on Southampton side. They're shit. Every game. They are shit every game. But big decisions like this is something you talk about. And it always is. If there's a red card, you talk about it. If there's a penalty, you talk about it. This should have been a red card, so we're going to talk about it. Like, what the fuck? And also, Benderak's one... Um, I guess we can talk about that later as well. Let, let's let's do this one first. Morsley, um, now I'm going to play this video. Ah, he's already got a yellow card. This is, is should have been basically him sending off. So let's play this through. Play this through. Downs wins the ball, and he just basically kicks him in the leg. It's a yellow card. It's a, it's not like super dangerous. It's not a rig, like a straight red or anything like that. It's not super dangerous, but it's a yellow card. I mean, Stonewall yellow card, should, that should have been the second yellow card. Um, and obviously it wasn't given. Not every decision is going to go perfectly. He should have been sent off, but it's like, okay, well, at the end of the day, not, not, no ref is going to be perfect. He's going to miss something here and there. But he should have been sent off and sort of, you know, uh, once you watch the replays and all that, with no VAR and all that, there's nothing to do with that. But he should have been sent off, and we'll look at the next one. All right, so this is his third yellow card offense that should have been given. And obviously, it is what it is. Uh, it wasn't given, but whatever. It's just, it should have been. I mean, if you have three yellow card offenses, I mean, you've probably seen plenty of games, you know, especially in the Premier League, because <laughs> VAR does nothing uh, worthwhile. Um, there's been plenty of games in the Premier League where you can countlessly see that should have been, someone should have had three yellow cards or whatever, and they're just not given because the refs are stupid. But this is a clear dive. I mean, if you don't think that's a dive, I don't know what to tell you. Um, he's flopped over like a bloody fish out of water, fella. Um, that's a clear dive. I mean, that should be a second yellow. If it's not, if that's not a foul, if that's not a foul and he's fallen to the floor like that, it's a dive. Now, there were multiple times I remember Ipswich player also dive for a penalty and there was another, uh, thing in the first half I want to say there was another dive. Now, obviously, Southampton players dive as well. I'm not going to sit here and say we're a perfect team. Um, every team does it. Um, some, uh, more sort of like flamboyant with their dives. Some are more like sort of try and play the ref, as they say. I can't stand any of it. I've always been a hard stance on fuck diving, get it the fuck out of the game. I want everyone who dives to be fined and punished um, because it cheats the game. Um, countless penalties are given by dives. Countless free kicks are given that result in goals, can result in drop points that are just people cheating. Um, I'm very adamant and I will never stand down from that. Uh, that is a dive. There's been many dives in this game that the ref just let go. 
um if i ever like if i was a ref which you guys probably like no please don't um that would be a yellow card there would have been about seven yellow cards for diving this game there was so fucking many i can't stand the soft fouls i can't stand diving I can't stand the idea of playing the ref. I think that's fucking ridiculous. I think it's just straight up. That's just like code word for cheating. Conning the ref is, is cheating in my book. Um, but he should have been sent off there. It's his third yellow card offense. Now, obviously, if you're an Ittrich person, you're coming here going, meh, meh, meh. Man, man, bias, bias, bias. Just remember, I also said there was plenty of times Southampton players should have got yellows for diving as well, yellows for fouls and all this sort of thing. Um, this is just because I'm a Southampton fan, this is typically what I go for. Obviously, you're naturally going to look at, you know, especially losing a game, you're going to look at the reasons why. I mean, he should have got free yellow cards. And if you don't want to say that's a dive, cool, he should have been sent off anyway. So it is what it is. That's just my opinion. You can disagree or agree or call me a fuckwit or whatever. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day because we have no sway on football. <laughs> Simple as that. We can't make the decisions. We can't change the decisions. They just happen. Um, we'll go look at the red... Read the, read the card. Yeah. For like Bednarak's red card potentially decision. Now, this is the uh, Bednarak challenge. Uh, we'll let it play through. Uh, Bree, no, it's not Bree. He's sent off at this point. Um, Downs uh, loses the ball um, and they counter. Now, obviously here, obviously he's it's it's not a cynical challenge. It's not like he's trying to take the player out or anything stupid like that. Um, but he does. So at, at that time, we can play the clip. Roll the clip. Oh no, that could be another red. That could be another red, in all honesty. You can hear that I said um, <laughs> we could be down to nine men because generally, in my opinion, it's, it's got a good claim for a red. It really does. I think we were lucky to get a yellow there. Would it have made any difference to the outcome? Nah, because we lost anyway, so <laughs> who gives a shit? I don't think you could claim that he is covering. I don't think because, you know, normal red cards when it comes to these sort of situations, if, if the defender takes someone out, but there's someone covering, it's a yellow card offense. If there's no one covering, it's a red card offense. So I wouldn't claim that Brooks is exactly covering. I think he's sort of in line when the tackle happens, but that's not exactly covering. Um, obviously, the ref 40 was. I think we were lucky to escape a second red, in my opinion. I think it was a very rash challenge. Um, one he sort of had to make, because if he does get beat in there and he allows him through, we lose, basically. We lose anyway, but, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing. Now, that's sort of all I've got, really. I just, I should have just woke up and went, fuck it, I'll make this video, because it is an important game. Um, I don't typically like doing reviews and previews, because I feel like a lot of the time it's me repeating myself and me fucking waffling about shit I and mean, i probably did it sometime today i think i did pretty well kind of to stay on stay on target but this is the table now we'll just finish it off by talking about our future prospects now obviously that was sort of a game we had to win to sort of get back into the uh top two contention um, as we do play Leeds and leicester as well so if we were within six points of one of them or three points of one of them then we can change it on our own but now we're a little bit off so we're 12 points behind with uh, eight games for us, six games for Leeds. Let's just, that's, I mean, Leicester's on 39 games. Well, if they were to win, then it'd be a bigger gap. Let's just play devil's advocate here. I'm just going to say, Southampton win their two games in hand, right? We'll just say, let's just say, Ipswich, Leeds, don't play any more games. Southampton win the next two games, right? Um, so that will put us on 80 points. So we're still six points behind with six games left. We do play Leeds, which means um, if we were to win that game, it's three points of five games. Do we see us even beating Leeds? Do we see us winning eight in, eight in a row to end the season with uh, difficult games? We have to play Leicester and Leeds. Obviously, that is our only way back, really, would be to beat them two and then both of them sort of falling apart, I guess. It's unlikely, very unlikely. The win against Ipswich really would have, I think, boosted us uh, a lot of confidence and a lot of thought like, oh, you know, it's possible, it's possible. But I don't see us winning every game. If we win the rest of our games, we get to 98 points. So that means Leeds can only get a max of 12 because they'll have a better goal difference. Or max of 11, sorry, because they'll have a better goal difference. So if they get 12, they'll tie with us. Obviously, Ipswich is less than that. It's only uh, 10 points, probably. And Leicester with a only one game ahead of us would be even more or even less I should say um so it's looking unlikely all we can do is really just try and work out the problems <laughs> there's a lot of problems work out the problems and hopefully in the playoffs sort of kick into a gear and just get some results I don't like the idea of playoffs I would have much preferred to get automatic I don't care about the title but just get automatic not have the stress of watching a team potentially get uh, knocked out of the playoffs on penalties at Wembley would be bloody good uh, that would be heartbreaking um, I'm desperate for promotion, but that's sort of how it is. I mean, we have our, we have ourselves to blame, no one else. Um, there's been plenty of games this season we should have won, plenty of drop points that we shouldn't have dropped. We had a good period where we went, what, was it 25 unbeaten uh, in all comps? That was sort of our only 
hope of getting back into the top two race. We sort of bottled it, which is, yeah, it is what it is. At the end of the day, we can't we can't say, oh, the reason we're not getting promoted is because Ipswich, Leeds and Leicester were just record-breaking season. They were so good. It's, at the end of the day, it's on us. We didn't win enough games when we should have. We didn't sort of control the fall as well as other teams did. You know, Ipswich had a fall. Uh, Leicester's had a fall. But you can probably tell me, Ipswich is, buddy, firing again. You know, they win, I think it was like one win in seven or one win in six. I can't remember exactly. Um, when we were on an unbeaten run, and now they're winning every game. We're not. <laughs> we're not doing that after our slump. Um, Leicester are having a slump, but I could tell you that they're probably going to... I don't know if they'll finish top two. I don't know. It depends how difficult they'll be to overcome their slump, but at the moment, they're doing better than us with their slump, so it is what it is. Playoffs, likely. Uh, I didn't expect to get top two, so it is what it is, but yeah, the three teams, which, which uh, Leeds and Leicester has been far superior than us uh, over the course of the season. Uh, we've had two slumps. Most of them have typically had one. Um, we've had two slumps and we're still in one. Brilliant. Uh, but that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, let me know your opinions, your thoughts. Uh, if you hate me, don't blame you. Um, if you don't hate me, I blame you. Um, but at the end of the day, here's what it is. I look forward to playoffs. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait to have heartbreak, but It's going to be excellent. But that's going to be it for this video. Don't count on me to make any more. I'll probably make one for the playoffs um, or if we somehow by a miracle get back in the race for the top two which will be as I said a miracle I'll make a video about playoffs or something like that don't expect another review don't expect the preview uh, because at the end of the day I don't typically enjoy doing them so I don't do them often but that's going to be it for this video hope you all enjoyed like subscribe did and let me know your thoughts about basically everything Bazunu, Russell Martin what your opinions are on that what you thought Russell Martin did wrong blah 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 what your thing is about the team you know what what's giving us the issues you know all this other shit um, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you boys sometime in the future